Hey everybody, this is Brian at Obedia, and in my exclusive video today, I'm going to show you one of the brand new features in Steinberg's Cubase 6.5 digital audio workstation. That new feature is the new comp tools now available in Cubase 6.5. Cubase already had a pretty comprehensive, uh, to use a good pun there, um, a set of comping tools which would allow you to use lane comping, essentially using pieces of many different pieces of recorded audio to create one final take. Uh, but with these new features in Cubase 6, it's even easier. So let's just show you guys real quickly how we can make use of some of them. So I have some drums here uh, on a couple different lanes and Initially, you're not going to see any of your, your lanes in Cubase if you've done some loop recording uh, inside of Cubase. So in order to get some lanes, you would either need to show all of the lanes on an audio track by clicking on the Show Lanes button right here, or you would have had to have uh, done some loop recording in Cubase by putting your transport into loop mode and recording. Either way, if you do that, you're going to have some lanes available on a single track. So what this essentially means is one single track is made up of a number of different layers, or in this case, lanes. So I'm going to enable show lanes. And now what I have here is a couple different drum tracks. I have my primary track on top. And then just below it, I have a secondary drum track, which is just some other different drum takes. Now what I can do by making use of the comp tool in Cubase 6.5 is quickly and easily build a different drum take. Now that's the biggest new feature that is new here is the comp tool in Cubase 6.5. It's right up here in the tools menu. Looks like like the hand tool that we've gotten to know in a lot of digital audio workstation environments, but in this case the comp tool is dedicated uh, only to comping, only to be able to build new takes by using the comp tool, uh, by using different pieces of audio. So let me show you how this is done. Uh, now again, I have some drums right here on my top lane, and those are currently active because I haven't done any comping. So that's my current active uh, drum take on the top. but. Again, down here, underneath uh, that take on lane number one, I have some other drums. Now, if you want to start off by auditioning different pieces of the takes that you're going to make use of on the different layers, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard if you're on a PC, command if you're on the Mac. This will invoke the speaker tool, and this way you can click in various parts of the lane that you're working on and listen to just that piece of the comp lane that you're working with. So that way you can find the piece that you're looking for. Now, after you have done that, you can start comping. So if you know specifically what you want to make use of, all you need to do with the comp tool is simply find the range which you would like to make use of, and now just click and drag to select the section which you'd like to make use of. So I'm just going to select this section right here. So now you're going to notice that in the range selection which I have made, I now have this darker waveform. And what's going to happen now if I play back is that my top lane is going to play until I reach this certain point, in which case that range selection that I made is going to play. So let me show you what that sounds like. So you can see it obviously sounds different, and that's because I'm making use of two different comps at the same time right there. So now I can also switch this comp range off by simply clicking it. So if I click it, I'm now going to only be making use of my top lane. But if I want to bring that piece back in, I simply need to click it with the comp tool and now it's going to be active again. Now also, after I have made a comp range selection, I can move my mouse to the right or the left of that range and I can grab and move the size of that comp range selection. 
So I'm not restricted to just what I had previously selected using the comp tool for a range. I can actually drag this out and change it. I also have access here to being able to trim my regions down if I would like. So it's very easy for me to trim regions and make use of the functions which I'm used to making use of in your average audio track uh, inside of Cubase. Now, if you want to change the timing of a selected range uh, which you have made using the comp tool, that's really easy to do. If you're on the PC, you're going to hold down Control and Alt. And if you're on the Mac, you're going to hold down Command and Option. Hold these down and you're going to invoke the modifier for slip event. Now what you can do is drag and actually move this waveform around in order to correct the timing and make it match up a little more closely with a specific section uh, which you know you want to play back. So in other words, if you find that your range selection is just about right but maybe you need to nudge it just a little bit, all you need to do is invoke the slip event and this way you can move that waveform around just a little bit. You can see that I can drag this all the way to the very beginning. This piece right here, which I now have in my uh, selected comp range, matches the same piece, which is right over here at the beginning of my first lane of comped audio. So this lets me just be very, very specific about the timing of my waveform. So this is incredibly useful for being able to quickly and easily build out a brand new and essentially, hopefully, perfect uh, waveform using different pieces uh, of audio which you have recorded. So of course in my case I'm only working with a couple different lanes here but if you had taken let's say five different comps of drums you could go through and create one final perfect drum piece by making use of uh, all of these different comping tools that are available to you. Now a couple other brand new things here in Cubase 6.5 for comping. If you right click in a lanes inspector section here on the left hand side of my workspace, I have some new features available in Cubase 6.5. One of these is clean up lanes and this is useful for uh, resolving event overlaps. So this way I can make sure that I don't have any events overlapping with each other and causing for uh, undesirable playback uh, after I've been going through and doing a lot of different comping. So that's easy to select. All I need to do, of course, is click on it. Another really, really useful feature here is create tracks from lanes. Now, if I click on create tracks from lanes, what's going to happen is the Cubase is going to take a few moments, and now it's going to create, as you can see, a brand new track for this lane, uh, which I had selected when I click the option to create new tracks from lanes. So what I now have is a brand new track which makes use of only the specific comp sections which I was making use of on that lane. So this is just very, very cool because now you can actually apply uh, various insert effects and other operations to this comp uh, track as if it were its own audio track because now it truly is. So that's an incredibly useful feature. And of course, finally, uh, also very useful here is the separated track and lane solo function. So this way I can uh, quickly solo a lane that I'm working with or solo just the track that I uh, want to be paying more attention to while I'm working in the mix and I can find the perfect mix uh, for my comp mix as I work along using the comp tool and really kind of designing again my own perfect mix here in Cubase 6.5. So there you go, guys. You can see how useful the comp tool really is. Uh, very, very easy and quick to use uh, and very, very simple because that's what's really important. Uh, and this is something that Cubase, I think, has paid a lot of attention to in designing the brand new comp tool. They've worked very closely with studio engineers to find out what it is that they need for being able to quickly and easily adjust and make comps while they're working in, in Cubase. So I hope you guys found this useful. As always, please stay in touch with me. My email address is brian at obedia.com. You can get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obediatutor and of course on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obediatutor. As always, give me a call. Find out how you can work one-on-one -on -one with us and get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. 
We'll help you attain your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.